Hi lovelies and welcome to The Witch's Cookery. In today's Litha vlog I'm going to take you through my summer solstice celebration, give you some ideas for midsummer DIYs, Litha spells and rituals, funny summer solstice kitchen witchery and much more. Of course we'll also learn a bunch about the pagan traditions and history behind the holiday. So what are we up to today? In a traditional midsummer herb hike and tell you a little bit more about history and traditions, a bit of green witchcraft in regards to weather and protection herbs that we will afterwards craft into a litha smoke bundle for your midsummer celebration. Then I want to share a truly enchanting kitchen witch recipe utilizing not only seasonal ingredients but also some of the symbols of the summer solstice. And last but not least I planned out a midsummer ritual to strengthen and harvest the choice and fun of the season and evoke happiness in your own heart. So let's venture out, observe nature and see what spiritual message we can take away from that. <music> Summer solstice is, or at least was, celebrated all over the world. The beginning of summer and the shortest night. This time of year the ancient Romans were celebrating the Vestalias, the festivities and holy blessings of the flame of the hard fire that was not supposed to go out. In ancient Greece the day was holy to the god Kronos, the god of agriculture. In Gallia the Celts celebrated Epona, the goddess of motherhood, fertility and the countries and farmers. And in the Germanic parts of Europe big fire wheels were rolled down hills into bodies of water to help strengthen the sun and symbolize the transition from one half of the year into the other one. Based on old farming traditions and beliefs that have either kept through the years or we know of from historic documents, we can conclude that this day is all about strengthening the sun and the warmth in order to ensure a good harvest and abundance, protection of house, home, cattle and health. We have moved away from the spring veggies and now it's time time to get in the big stuff. What does that mean for you as a modern day witch? Well, you just take those topics and apply them to your own life. Assuming that you're not farming your own crops, you can find other ways to strengthen the joy, the abundance, the warmth in your own life. Reconnecting with passions, making time for hobbies that bring you all those good feelings and warding off all negativity and negative nancies that wanna suck the joy of life out of you. As with every important rural holiday, of course, there were also a bunch of weather oracles for the day. For you honey, bitte im Regen, her noch kommt der Ungelegen. Bring you honey, Sommerhitze, ist es Runkeln und Kornnütze. Bienen, die vor Johannes schwärmen, tun des Imkers Herz erwärmen. Bottom line, you want it to be beautiful weather for the summer solstice in order to ensure that the rest of the summer is just as glorious. And also big ritualistic bonfires were central to the celebration of Midsummer or St. John's as it's celebrated now in most of Europe. It was custom that every household would give something flammable in order to make that bonfire huge, to really strengthen the sun with it. The bonfires were often built either on way crossings or on the fields to ensure that the ashes, the fertile ashes would fall onto the fields because it was also believed that that would make the crops grow healthier, stronger and better. And to drive that point of the fertile fire home, another superstition says that if you didn't attend the summer solstice fire, you would never get married. So if you're still desperately doing the tinder dance, now you know what you did wrong. Young ladies were the ones that had to jump over the fire and the higher the better because the higher they jumped, the higher the crops would grow. They brought you grand shame if you didn't get your plump ass high enough over those flames because guess who got blamed if the harvest of that year wasn't good. Unfit witch! Pretty sure that would have been me. And the summer solstice was also a very happy day to bring blessings to your home, to your hearth, People would decorate the houses with garlands, with wreaths of flowers, which we'll talk about 
in just a bit when we dive more into the Greenwich lore of the day. But now for some kitchen witchery, because of course one cannot let a holiday pass without honoring it with a proper food and a bit of indulgence. As always when cooking or baking for the holidays on the Wheel of Year, we are going seasonally and in tune with what nature provides. Now the traditional choice will be strawberry and elderflower as both are in season and heavily connected in folklore to the summer solstice. If you don't know why, check out my last Last year's Lither vlog and learn all about it plus some mouth-watering recipe for a strawberry and elderflower chocolate cake. Mm. I just got super inspired by the beauty of the red seas of poppies this year. I cannot recall seeing that many ever before in the fields. Hopefully that means farmers finally cutting back on all the bad chemicals that kill those pretty weeds in favor of the bees. So beautiful the composition, white chamomile, the blue cornflowers waving in the wind and an the abundance of bright red poppies. But I digress. So anyways, we are making a wonderfully moist summer solstice sun with sweet poppy seed filling. Now if you are from Germany, Austria or any Eastern European country, chances are that you are fairly familiar with poppy seeds and baking. On that note, I need you to try this filling because it is so much better than the dry shit finding most traditional recipes. If you are not, you are in for a treat because this makes the perfect mid-afternoon snack or a great companion to your morning coffee too. And I know it does look a bit intimidating and complicated but honestly it somewhat is. But if you pop in a nice audiobook while you get down and dirty the time just flies by. So while you are sweating over this recipe let me tell you a bit more about the use of poppy. But not too much, I shall save this topic for the next sour and vlog. I never paid poppies that much attention but apparently they are heavily connected to the fairy folklore of Austria and Bavaria, are used in ancestral witchcraft and find traditional use in folk witchery for the darker half of year. Anyways, more to come soon. Also subscribe. But for the sunny solstice they also had significance in folk belief. A farmer that had many of those weeds growing in his fields could count himself lucky as this meant that his daughter would definitely wet that year. And personally I used the ground up seeds with a white yeast dough to represent the duality of the solstice, the battle of dark and light, the hello goodbye, not to quote Beatles, the brightness of summer and the knowledge that the nights are getting shorter and shorter with every passing day and the wheel keeps spinning. Now while this recipe is considered a cake it is not overly sweet so especially if you have the American palate as I like to call it you might consider this more of a sweet-ish type of bread. By the way there is a fun folk tradition for the summer solstice where you bake a bread with a stone of fruit in it then you form a question in your mind which requires an answer in numbers like how many babies will I have, how many thousands will be in my bank account end of this year you get the gist. Then you cut a slice of the bread and count the numbers of pits you have to spit out while eating. And there is your answer. And well, I made this fancy schmancy poppy seed cake into a sun shape just to honor the motto of the day, strengthening the brightness of the sun, helping it shine bright and at least with a delectable flavor of this kitchen witch holiday masterpiece you can cast some bright smiles on the faces of your friends and family. A very traditional thing to do on St. John or the summer solstice is to go for a little herb hike to collect all the goodness that right now is exploding in nature. So stock up for your witchy apothecary and here in southern Germany we have two very important days for collecting herbs. One is the summer solstice used to get all those protective herbs in for a more ritualistic type of purposes and the other one is the 15th of August where you will collect all your healing herbs. So in Litha or the summer solstice we are looking for Wetterkräuter or weather herbs. These were called like that because they were believed to keep thunder, bad weather or hail away, protect your house, protect your fields. Very important ones are St. John's wort, Markwort, Tansy and traditionally you would harvest them on St. John's midday in the full summer sun so they're all charged with that solar energy. In the days people would then bind them into a bundle or make them into a wreath and then hold them really close to the summer solstice fire in order to have that extra energy from the fire jump onto the 
herbs and then they would hang it in the house or they would throw it over the roof to protect the house from thunder and lightning. The traditional Saint John's bundle is usually made out of seven or nine herbs because both are considered a holy number. What exact herbs are in there depends from region to region what's available to you but basically anything that's growing right now. now I personally don't use it to protect my house so much. I use it in a translated way in my modern day witchcraft in order to keep negativity out of my house and to bring in that joy, that summer sun, brightness, positivity. And also in other countries there is a lot of green witch superstition and folk witchcraft going on. For example in Sweden the ladies would collect a seven flowers, slip them underneath their pillow at night and then they would dream of their future husband. In Lithuania you also have a wonderful custom for the day where you collect three times nine flowers or herbs and then you bless them or burn them in the summer solstice fire. The first nine flowers represent wishes that you have, the next nine are wishes for family or friends and the last nine are wishes for your country. So it's kind of like a little midsummer abundance spell. In Bavaria you also had the Johannes Streu, a strew of different flower petals that you would put underneath your table to draw in love or you would just slip a little bouquet of St. John's wood underneath your pillow for the same purpose. Other herbal traditions were to make a belt out of mugwort to jump over the fire or to make crowns from vervain for the festivities of the day. Now with that abundance of wild and free herbs outside, we would be stupid if we wouldn't make use of that and make a lovely smoke bundle. Yes, there is more out there than only sage to cleanse. And that particular bundle I love to make for the summer solstice to have all those uplifting energies bundled up to be burned throughout the year, especially during the darker half of the year to bring in a little bit of joy and comfort. Now what you exactly put in there really depends on your own taste. I personally go for St. John's Ward, for chamomile, for some roses from my garden, maybe some mallow, tansy, just a bit of mugwort for that extra magic and for this very sweet uplifting smell, some meadow sweet. Making a smoke bundle is fairly easy all you need is the herbs which you can for sure also find in the supermarket and then some natural string a cotton string something that doesn't have a bunch of chemicals in there that will either like melt together in a plastic lump or you know cause you all kinds of cancers while you try to do your magic and then you just start by binding them together you can like slightly let them air dry in the sun make sure they're not completely dried because then it's harder to put it in a bundle and to actually not break the herbs that are in there then you start by tying them up in pairs much like a shibari workshop and you add more and more until you have a nice big bundle. Don't make it too thick and also make sure that it's not too moist inside because that will rot and then you want to hang it in a dark cool place out of the sunlight so it keeps the aromas, it keeps the nice scent in there but it still has the option to dry up completely to then be burned for your witchy celebrations for cleansing or for whatever cottage witchery you intend to use it for when the skies are finally blue and the sun is out it's so much easier to feel that happiness to cultivate feelings of joy and also to feel very sticky and uncomfortable but you know at least you can have a cocktail while you do so and uh, get a tan so it's, uh, it's not that bad. Anyway I wanted to share a little summer solstice ritual and I did want to stick with a seasonal message of strengthening what brings you joy, happiness and abundance. Either that camera is incredibly heavy or I really should start working out again. <laughs> Another little joyful happening occurred last week when I went to my post box and the kitchen moth had sent me a wonderful litha kit. She met at my Wicked Wild Pogesnacht retreat and she's one of the most inspiring and kind-hearted people I have ever met in my life. So she made this entire set of herbs, grimoire sheet with a 
different correspondences and information, special leather tea blend. It's actually a really fun idea too for your midsummer celebration. Maybe gather some herbs, let them infuse just in sunlight, make a sun tea out of it, throw some lemon in there, some elderflower if you like that very delicate type of flowery taste. And then she also had included a little travel altar and an uh, idea and inspiration for a midsummer ritual. So I took elements from her ritual and intertwined it with my own ideas. We are laying a mandala with naturally gathered ingredients and you can gather those ingredients while you go on a sunny midsummer walk and really embrace those feelings of happiness, that uplifted summer energy, gratefulness, the abundance in nature, the sun on your face. And then I connected it to the idea of the Lithuanian traditions of the three times nine wishes. So I'm laying out three times nine items. So here I'm thinking of nine things that I am grateful for that I already have in my life. So for me, that would be obviously the, the crotch goblin and the loin fruit. And then also where I live, this beautiful corner of the universe, the creative freedom that my job brings with it, my general positive outlook on life and so on. Next, I'm thinking of nine sources of happiness that I want to invite into my life. A new friends, a fire pit in my garden, a new and adjusted routine for life and self-care in general and some other bits and bobs. And the last nine offerings represent passions, talents, activities that do bring me a lot of joy and a lot of happiness that I want to focus on during this summer. So these are things like cooking, traveling, reading, doing sports, sitting in the sun, getting dressed up, doing excursion with the kiddos and so on. So now we have a beautiful offering picture fueled with happy thoughts, energy, with great plans, with wishes and with gratitude. And I will just enjoy that for a second while I sip on my tea, light a candle and watch a magnificent summer solstice sunset. All right, my loves, I wish you the most magical litha and I'm gonna see you very soon. Bye!